right, Jimmy, man. So you're a champion. Yes. I got to ask you, man, just if you were a guy in, in both these clubhouses with your experience, what would you be telling both these these teams right now? Well, um, being up one game uh, is obviously better than being down one game. Um, shoot, and honestly, after the, after the first game in both World Series, we were up. Um, but if you're the team that's up, you're saying we got to get three more. Yes. That's it. it. It doesn't matter how it happens. We got to get three more. If they if they get a split here, that's fine. We go there. We have to make sure we bring it back here if we don't close out. Um, you know, in, in Arizona. If you're the team that's down, you're saying let's. Our job is to get the split. Mm -hmm. We had a chance last night. It feels worse because of the way it happened. Yeah. You know, the bullpen's been solid all, all all year long or all playoffs long at least, and they finally got touched. But that's okay. Our job is to win one. It doesn't matter what it looks like, what it felt like. We win one with a chance to go home to get the four because you have three games at home. That's our job. So we lost one, but we have fellas. Let's get the split. Let's get the split. I love it, man. So, you know, you're one of the greatest shortstops of my generation, right? So I got to ask you this on the spot. If you did a Mount Rushmore for shortstops, uh, you're four. Wow. Who will be your four you put on wow. the mountain top? Okay. Well, obviously, I can't, there's no obviously, right? But obviously, uh, Ozzie Smith. Okay. He was a guy that, you know, I was, I tried to be Ozzie Smith. Mm -hmm. um, when I felt tall, I was Cal Ripken. So okay. he would be two. Okay. Um, and, and these are guys that I got to experience. But I'll go with the guy that I didn't get to see. I don't know, because he has a he has a fellow countryman. And we're talking about defense. I'm thinking just okay. defensive. I think I know where you're going with this. Oh, Marvin Scale. There we go. Okay. Mr. It's, Gold uh, Glove. It's, it's, it's three. Okay. And shoot. And then we look at both sides of the ball. Because I'm not going to put myself in this. Got to go with the other number 11, Barry Larkin. I like it. That is a nasty list, nasty list, nasty list. So, man, Jimmy, I got to ask you this, man. Just, you know, growing up, for you, you talked about Ozzie Smith. Were there any other players that just caught your eye that made oh, you want to play baseball? Rick Anderson was my guy. Ricky Henderson. I mean, Rick Anderson. He, we're from the same area. Uh, he actually grew up two blocks from my dad. So my dad went to Mac where Frank Robinson went. Okay. Ricky, you know, was a guy at Oakland Tech. So they knew each other, but because they lived two blocks away, they went to schools on different sides of the neighborhood. And um, seeing Ricky in a uniform, it was just something about him. It was magical because it wasn't just a baseball player. It was like a piece of entertainment, the way he wore his pants. Mm -hmm. He wore, you know, the, 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 the batting gloves with, with the wristbands attached to it, the way he walked the way he would catch the ball and snatch it, you know, just kind of yeah. everything about him was like, this is what you pay to see. Now, I was too young to really understand that, but I knew it. It's like, I just want to go look at Ricky. He's going to play baseball because that's what he does. But I watched every single move. And then I found out he was from Oakland. It's like, maybe that's why I liked him. It was just a swag about him back when you're from the Bay Area. It's the style that you go about everything. Mm -hmm. And it just resonated with me. And that was my favorite player. When I say... Like, I was Ricky, I was Ricky. When Ricky was stealing bases, we had a couch, I don't know, five, six feet apart. I'm pacing myself out, went for, for him to slide, and I slide into the couch, and I'm Ricky. I'm thinking like Ricky. I'm in a box thinking like Ricky. I'm on the bases thinking like Ricky. I used to always snatch the ball in high school. My coach would get mad, like, you're going to drop it one day. I was like, I've never seen Ricky drop it. And I told him, and it, and I, and it didn't happen, signed. I said, if I ever drop a ball snatching it, I'll quit. And I got 16 years in. <laughs> MVP, by the way, as well. So, you know, I got two more questions, man. So, speaking of Bay Area, man, I just got to ask you, because this is ironic. Bay Area may be the most slept on when it comes to athletes. Jason Kidd, yep. yourself, just Ricky Anderson. Yep. Well, I, I, I keep going. Gary Frank Payton. Robinson, just, Joe Morgan, Gary Payton. Yeah. Uh, How is that to have that pipe on athletes? Dontrell Willis. Wow. You know, we, we, we got guys. How is, um, it, how is it to realize that the Bay Area has birthed so many great athletes? You know, it is – I think it's – because it's a small area, I mean, you know, the surrounding cities, everybody's aware of what the next person's doing, and it's a healthy competition. What's the best city? Oakland, Richmond, San Fran, <laughs> Hayward, you know, and, and you're okay. really repping your city. But on top of that, you represent all the legends that have come before you. It's like, I'm, it's not going to stop with me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do my part to be, hopefully become legendary and pass the baton to the next pass generation. Torch, yeah. Like, it didn't stop with us. Like, there's not going to be a gap. There shouldn't nope. be a gap. 
And so when you know that, you want to live up to that. Yes, you want to be the best amongst your peers and go out there, and you know we're from the Bay. We're going to talk it, but we're going to bag it up. Yes. And, and it's all in me. I'm going to talk it, but I'm going to bag it up. And if, right. and, and, and if you feel something about it, feel some way about it, it's your job to stop me and vice versa. If I feel some way about it, it's my job to shut you up. But that's what made it fun and you know, in, in a very competitive way, which I think helped me for Philadelphia, the yes. city that's hard in their yeah, athletes. Hard and it's like, look, this is what I do. So um, I think it's just, just having that tradition and knowing it exists, it helps you to excel. I love it. Last question, man. So just, just that Philly team, and I want you to talk about one guy, man, because you play with him, Doc Holliday. Doc. Man, um, man. You know, just, you know, you were iconic, obviously, what you did. Ryan Howard, just guys that go on that list. Chase, I mean, well, God, that, that team is crazy now. I think about it, just naming the guys. But Doc Holliday, man, God rest his soul. Can you just talk yeah. about some moments that you may have had with him and just what he was as a player? So, it's funny. Like, everything you hear about Doc, his work ethic, it's true. It's not just for show. Like, that's who he was. And for me, before even becoming a teammate of his, we were teammates through Nike. We all wore mm -hmm. Nike. And we would go on those Nike trips at the end of the year. And I would be waking up, coming out of our room, going down for breakfast. Mm -hmm. And he's sweating because he's already been to the gym and worked out. And he's coming to stop to eat on his way back up to his room to get ready for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, you know it's November. Like, we literally, where are you taking your break? And that's just who he was. Wow. So it was like, man, this is a guy that, you know, prior to playing with him, like, I want to play with this guy. But like, I've seen what he does. He's great. He hadn't won a championship. I'm like, I want to bring him a championship. I want to be one of the guys that said I got to bring one of the greatest pitchers of our, gen of our era for sure that championship, just to have that, like, we did it for Doc type attitude. Wow. Then when he got in uniform, it was like, this is why. I'm not seeing it from the outside. I'm not seeing it just on vacation. I'm seeing it as his daily routine. But what people don't know about Doc is the days he wasn't pitching, he was a big kid. He laughed, he choked, he had his race cars, he had his airplanes. He did everything but worry about baseball, which is, which made him human. It's like he's not a machine. But the day he pitches, he's here. He's locked in, you don't mess with him, that's Doc, you respect it. Wow. But on day wasn't, big old smile, teeth everywhere, having fun, and that doesn't get talked about. Yes, we get to know who he was as a pitcher and an athlete, but as a person, he was a happy guy. So when I said I had the opportunity to really share the clubhouse with him, I felt this way before I even, you know, knew him really, but in that clubhouse like, let's win this for Doc, because he deserved it. He worked that hard, he put his life and soul into this game, and you just want to do it for Doc. It was literally like, Let's do it for Doc. We got ours. If we win, this isn't ours. This is his. You know? Man. Well, Barrier Legend, MVP, champion. I mean, the list just goes on, man. We got Jimmy Ross, E40. I mean, we can go down. Hey, Rest in peace, Mac Dre. Rest Mac in peace, Mac Dre. Hey, we're in town, so we got to get short. You know what I'm saying? Spice, pot, everybody. You feel wow. me? Yeah. One time for the Barrier Legend, Jimmy, Pink man. Snake, three times crazy. Yay! Wow, this is the legend, y'all. Y'all be sure to follow my guy in his journey, what he's doing right now outside of being a player as well. So, Jimmy, appreciate your time, yeah. brother. We're going to be talking again soon. Thank yeah. you so much.